uh, to finalize the deal on the 2023 presidency, five aggrieved governors of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, are reported to be set to meet with the presidential candidate of the All Progressives Congress, APC, Ashiwaju Bola Ahmed Tinubu. The support by G5 for Tinubu is going to be a game changer, akin to the declaration of the G6 for the APC in 2014. The group of governors had insisted on their call for the removal of the national chairman of the party, Iocha Ayu, and emergence of a southern politician as the party's chairman. The group therefore withdrew their support for the presidential candidate of the party, Atiku Abubakar, over his alleged refusal to yield to their demand. And joining us, like we promised, is um, the PDP, or rather, Honorable Angu Ongu, not Central Zonal Coordinator, Atiku Support Organization. Good morning, Honorable, and thanks for joining us. Same to you. Hmm. Okay. We're just wondering how it's going to pan out. Your governor, uh, you are from Benway State, your governor made a pronouncement. Uh, well, let me not call it a pronouncement. He made a statement that if he were not in the People's Democratic Party, he probably would be going around with Peter Obi of the Labour Party to come fast for go votes for him. Uh, but because he's in the PDP, he cannot do that. Now, how do you think the chances of your principles are still high with all this? Because they're talking APC, they're talking the possibility of Labour Party as well. So any of these people can just uh, pick this 5G, eh? 5G, G5. okay, G5. Oh, the network is entering my head now. <laughs> the G5 could decide for either the APC or the LP. So how will this pan out? Uh, Thank you very much. Uh, politics is a game, as we all know, and it's a game of interest. The interest the G5 governors has been expressed in different ways. Uh, we deeply appreciate that uh, part of the game. But I would like to say that uh, at the end of the game, you know, they bitter the contest, they bitter the victory. And not like they saw during the World Cup in Qatar. How that it was becoming very clearly that the Argentine team was not going to win that game. But when at the end they won, you know, it was very sweet victory. So I would like to say that it's fine that the five governors are expressing their dissatisfaction with this and that and that. But I would like to clear the air that one of the contentions of the G5 governors uh, spearheaded by uh, His Excellency Nis on Wiki and my, the governor of Benue State, my former principal, uh, His Excellency Samuel Otto has been that the national chairman of the party should go. I want to say first that it's unconstitutional. There are no laws within the PDP that state that if the presidential candidate of the party is of a particular zone, the chairmanship of that party should go to the next zone. There is nowhere in the constitution of the PDP that states that. And I want to be very, very clear. And to tell Nigeria, Nigerians should not be deceived. There is nowhere in the constitution. And there is no precedence to that. Because even in law, we go on precedent. What is the precedent of a national chairman vacating his position? The president we have was President Yara uh, 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 Luchagano Basanjo was the president. And the presidential candidate, Umar Musa Yaradwa, was on the north. And the national chairman, Colonel uh, 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 Amadou Ali, was on the north also from Kogi State. 
it was after the elections was were conducted, and Omar Omuso Yaradwa emerged, that a special convention was convened, and Vincent Ogbolaf, of blessed memory also, was elected as the national chairman of the PDP. So where is the premise of this agitation of the G5 governors that uh, Senator Ayu should vacate position, his position as the national chairman? What happens to the other positions within the party? Because the positions are actually rotation, rota uh, rotational between the South and the North. So when we rotate, when, is it only the chairmanship position that they are about, or all the other positions should be should, 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 should also be given out? Are they trying to create a constitutional problem for the party? Because if you are you vacate this position, there will be a constitutional issue. What happened to the other positions? What happens to the vice chairmanship of the party? What happened to the position that has been the position? And they bring out video that you actually said if the presidential candidate is from the and uh, not he was going to resign. But he said that with a caveat. And the caveat was that if the party says he should resign. So the party has not said, Dr. Yochia, you should resign his position. And so far, so good. The, the gentleman has managed the affairs of the party credibly well. The party is going about his uh, 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 campaigns, presidential rallies, and Nigerians are seeing the superb work he's doing. So uh, I would like to state clearly that the agitations of the G5 governors over the issue of the chairmanship of the party is misplaced. I it have, is highly misplaced. Yeah, honorable, and, uh, honorable, just a moment. It is also mischievous. Yes, just a moment that, now, honorable. The, the, the chairman of the party should vacate his position because it doesn't have a place in the law. There is no law that says that if the presidential candidate of a party comes to a particular zone, yeah. the chairman should also come. From we've that we've, from, we've from heard that. We've party. heard that, honorable. Just a moment, honorable. We've heard that. You've said it uh, so many times here. I have two problems with that. Um, First of all, is that um, you said in the last, last time that you were here on the program, I remember vividly, that you said you were very confident that before uh, we get into the election proper, uh, the PDP will do the needful. PDP is reputed for having internal mechanisms that resolves issues. You promised that that was going to happen. Mm -hmm. But you're not talking like there's any hope in the pipeline that this thing is going to be resolved. It's like, okay, these people are recalcitrant, these people are going against the constitution and all that. Secondly, is that PDP seems not to be respecters of gentleman agreements, whether they are in the constitution or not, because we were given, the Nigerian people were given the zoning formula, as it were, by the PDP. And it was written in your constitution as we hear the zoning formula. But as soon as there was a little bit of pressure, you dumped the, the, the zoning thing and took the presidency or the candidacy of the presidency to the north, which should have come to the south. Whatever calculations that you made. But it seemed as if when it comes to what will favor the party uh, or what will not favor the party, you don't think about the Nigerian people. So you jettisoned the zoning and let Atiku become the candidate. And then you have now given up hope of reconciling the G5 with the party itself. So it gives me worry, these two things. Uh, I was here, and just like you said, even with what I've said, it does not mean that there will be no uh, reconciliation with the PDP G5 governors. And after I came here, our presidential candidate, His Excellency Atiku Abubakar, was on Channel TV. And I, I think he has the highest powers as a person to resolve this crisis. And he said, look, 
I have met with Nisom Wike, that seemed to be the arrowhead of that group, five times. And just like your colleague uh, in the studio said, one of such meetings happened in London. So we have tried, the party has tried, the party has reached out to see that this crisis is resolved. But in the event that it is not resolved, we should be able to speak the truth. And that is, this is me speaking the truth here to Nigerians. To disabuse the mind of Nigerians, that look, it is not that the party is not a respecter of gentleman agreement. The party respects those agreements. But those agreements should be based on the Constitution. And if speaking, if going to even gentleman agreement, should, which part of Nigeria has not produced the presidency of Nigeria? Because one of the, one of the agitations is that, okay, Buhari is coming from the north, and, you know, it shouldn't, the, 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 the word now, the candidacy of the other party should not go to the north again. But this is turning logic on its head. Because if you look very well, within the PDP, Northern Nigeria has ruled Nigeria for only two plus years. And that was the tenure of Umaru Musa Yaradwa, of blessed memory. The South, we had Obasanjo for eight years. We have Good Luck Ebele Jonathan for almost six years. You go into an election to win. You don't go into an election because you just want to be in a context. Going into an election to win, you put in your best foot. And I want to say the PDP has put out its best foot out there in this election by the emergence of His Excellency Atuko Abubakar. And I would like to quote Senator Dino Malai. You will not have a Messi on your team, a, a, a Lionel Messi on your team, and you will put him on a bench and feed in other players when he's not injured. Atiku Abubakar is like the Lionel Messi of the PDP. So we cannot have him fit with all his qualities, capable, and we will put him on a bench to feed in other players. Okay, uh, uh, let me come in here, Honorable. So where, 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 where is the... Honorable, just a minute, just a minute, just a minute, sir. If, I'm, if I am to go by your argument, you know, from every statement that you've just made, so where is the place of internal democracy? I mean, in the PDP, because this was an agreement that almost every other part of Nigeria, every... every uh, individual in the country and all the political parties had to abide by this idea of zoning that was brought up by the PDP. And then it, it got to a time to implement it. Even if the PDP had decided, okay, we're not going to go by this. Isn't it something that should be talked about in the party and come to a general agreement? Because that if you're if you're saying if you decide to if you decide to um, um, use the Leo Messi analogy, then a lot of people would totally disagree because then uh, what happens to other good players in the team? If you had allowed me finish my line of thought, I would have answered your Please question. Please go ahead. Please go ahead. My line of thought was this: is this? His Excellency Samuel Oto was the chairman of the zoning committee. That is part of the internal democracy, internal processes of showing up a candidate. And it was this same committee headed by a very critical figure within the G5 
governors now headed that committee. And I wish you know the recommendations of both that committee. What were the recommendations of those committee? That committee threw, or threw open the context of getting a presidential candidate. That was the first process. It threw, up that, it threw, it threw it open and said, look, we are not going to zone it to any part of the country. Every member from any part, any member of the party from any part of the country can go into the contest. Why are we not having these conversations? That it was Governor Otom that made that recommendation. He was the chairman of that committee. So why are we not having this conversation? Why do you want to deceive the people all the time, even as politicians? We should learn to speak the truth. And the truth is, he was the one that made, he was the chairman of that committee, he endorsed it, he signed the report of that committee, and threw the contest open for other Nigerians to contest too. So why is it that after the goal has been scored, he wants to change the goal post? To begin to talk about gentleman agreement, it was supposed to go to the south, it was not supposed to go to the it was supposed to go to the south, it was not supposed to go to the north. All right. That is that is say the least very, very dubious. Right. So honorable, we're back to you now. Um when you were talking about honoring the agreements and you said agreements need to be honored, but it has to be something that is in the constitution. And I am not a PDP member. You come to me and you campaign and you give me promises. You give me, we have an agreement with you. When you are voted into power, you're going to do X, Y, Z. And it is not in your constitution. Mm -hmm. How am I, as a Nigerian, supposed to trust you that you can keep to the promise that you made without writing down and signing an agreement? Honorable, are you there? I'm there. I'm yes. there. We, we all remember the the biblical proverbs of the years of plenty and the locust years of the APC we are facing now. Uh, the PDP years were the years of plenty. The PDP years were the years of abundance. And it will be no different that one of the vice presidential can our candidates now his Excellency Atiku Abubakar was the vice president under the Obasanjo regime and was a regime where Nigeria, Nigerians experienced economic boom, the telecommunication we are enjoying today, the privatization that of industries that took place and opened up Nigeria to for many investors to come in. That the economy was under this man. And he, uh, he proved himself to be formidable, to have capacity, to have what it takes to get Nigeria working. And it is what we still happen if given the opportunity, he will replicate some of the success and even take it inches higher uh, when given opportunity. So some of those things, each party have a blueprint. Like presently, we have a five-point agenda, a recovery plan, and uh, maybe I will send you a copy. And that will be the framework. That will be the work plan. That will be the roadmap to recover this country. That is if you are voted into power. But how can we trust you to even vote you into power as a party? That's what I'm asking you. Because even if you talk about the Obasanjo years, the same Obasanjo doesn't even trust so your, premise, your principle. What is your premise for talking about trust? What, what is the premise about this uh, trust uh, question you're asking? On what promise are you promising your, your question if Nigerians should trust mm -hmm. us if they don't sign any agreement with us? The covenant, the oath of office is an agreement already. The oath of office public officials take 
it's an agreement or a covenant with Nigerians already. So what, what is the promise of uh, Nigerian trusting the PDP to vote them into power or not? Uh, because, because the, the PDP because... has not paid Nigeria. The people are watching, Honorable, and this back and forth with the G5 has lingered. It's been, it has gone on oh, for, uh, like I said for before, so the long. G5 and group, the, the G5 are being dubious. They are not being consistent. Right? That group is not being consistent with the agitations. Next time they will say it's you that should go. Next time you hear them speaking, saying enemies did not want me to get a vice presidential candidate. Next time they will say it was Tambawa, uh, His Excellency Governor Minu Tambawa, that sold out for Wiki not to get a presidential ticket. They, they keep changing the goalposts. So, for truth, we don't really, really know what they want. Yeah, but I don't know if PDP knows what they want because you mentioned also that uh, Autumn was the chairman of that zoning committee and they were the ones okay. that, that jettisoned the zoning thing. And if there was a mistake, that was a mistake. So are you saying they made a mistake, the PDP saw the mistake, they ran with the mistake. Now, even if they have repented, so to it speak, and said mistake. they are coming it's back, coming you mistake. have decided to that. run with the mistake. Hello, it wasn't a mistake. That wasn't a mistake. Uh, your sister, in the, my sister in the studio said, look, what are the internal democratic processes that were put in place? Mm -hmm. And I said, look, that committee was set up where consistent, where represented. He was not the only person in that committee. Governor uh, uh, the governor of uh, 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 good State, you know, was part of that committee and several other, you know, other statesmen were part of that committee. So it wasn't uh, just one, it wasn't just his own brainchild. You know, those were the internal mechanisms put in place to you know, make sure the election ran properly. So it wasn't a mistake. Because if it, were, if it were a mistake, he was, uh, it, it would have been corrected at that point. And I said, he was the chairman of that committee. So I want to uh, clarify here very clearly, uh, tell Nigerians that that committee wasn't a mistake. Its job was done properly. Its job was done extensively to ensure that Nigerians or the party and the party comes out with a presidential candidate that is generally accepted by all. And like I said on our other platforms, if these people have personal grudges with His Excellency Atiko Abubakar, they should go and settle those personal grudges and don't make it, don't elevate personal grudges to state affairs. His Excellency Nisom Mwike should be a good sportsman, should be a good loser. Not after winning and uh, losing the primaries, is about here and there uh, causing trouble for the party. We don't see that in the APC. We don't see that in other parties, in other parties that uh, run uh, presidential primaries. Why is it still different? It should be a good loser. And it, uh, after now, that's why I call it very dubious. They are making it look like it is a southern Nigeria and a northern Nigerian thing. Which is not. It is their personal ambitions that are pursuing. Now, the now, Nigerians is their personal ambition. Now you're making it. Now you're making it look like. You're making it look like. Um, honorable. It look like it is a northern Nigeria and a southern Nigerian thing. It is unacceptable. Yeah. And we as young honorable, just a moment. Just a moment. You don't think the sheep, because we are young people coming up within the party. This is the party that made them whatever they are in life. Mm. If they Interesting. Have a house somewhere, if they have anything they have, it is within this party that made them to become governors or whatever they are today. So why must they shink the ship of this party? Because their interests are not protected. You mustn't always win. Nigerians no. should know this. Honorable, so honorable. Data, honorable, just a moment, like honorable. The southern Nigeria and the northern Nigerian team. The, the, the APC government has bastardized this country in now enough. Uh, the, 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 the nepotism of the present APC government has divided this country enough. Not for us to begin to talk about southern Nigeria and northern Nigeria within the PDP. We should be closing ranks. We should be closing ranks to build a great nation, not to, to divide this country. 
Mm. I'm, I'm glad you're talking about um, coming together to build the nation. You, you alluded to the Messi, Argentina, all that. Argentina was beaten by, like, the smallest team in the World Cup. But they mm. came back and then they won the World Cup. And you know what? They, the, the captain said it was because of teamwork. This teamwork we are not finding in PDP, as far as a and lot of us are concerned. The team, what, what is some members of the team don't want to be part of the team? We have also seen... A they would lose team. if some members uh, don't hello, want to be part of the hello, team. Hello, sir. Uh, hello, sir. We were here when uh, uh, C. Ronaldo, Christian Ronaldo, did not want to be clearly the part of the Portugal team. What happened? He was put on the bench. All right? And a young man that came for him, to replace him on the field. How many goals did he give the country? But they lost. The fact that they didn't finish the At the end of the day, they lost. That, 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 is, mm -mm, that, uh, that is not what I'm saying. But in that particular game, he was put on the bench. What happened? The young man that replaced him gave that country two solid goals. All right. So what are we talking about? If members of a team are not ready to be part of a team, you have to move. The boss has to go and leave them. All right, okay. uh, Honorable, because we're almost out of time, we're trying to move forward now. What is it looking like for the PDP? The G5 has threatened to uh, Choose teach a different, their yeah. support behind any other of the presidential candidates of any other of the political parties. And um, let us assume that we are already in January and this the G5 goes ahead to support someone else. Uh, what, it, what is the PDP putting in place to help them chest that pressure when it comes? And what is, going to, what, what is it going to look like? What is the fate of the G5 governors if they go ahead uh, to take such a decision and act on it quickly because we're rounding off now? Thank you very much. Uh, I would like to remind Nigerians that Nigerians should go out there and put their conscience. And I would also like to state that the Electoral Act does take away the powers of state governors to begin to act like Fuda laws. Gone are the days where you can sit somewhere and write elections mm. or allocate votes to people. The Beavers, the uh, Bimodia voting system, it makes it impossible for you to sit down somewhere and write votes, allocate votes how you want. So the people are going to vote their conscience. We see what is happening in rivers. They will see what is happening all over the country. Even in the states of this uh, G5 governors. Atiku, His Excellency Atiku Ababaka and the PDP is solid on ground. So the G5 governors, it is within their personal rights to decide to uh, support a particular candidate within their personal rights. Nobody takes that right away from them. Mm. But I want to state clearly again that the people are going to vote, vote their conscience. Even though the governors have one single vote to vote on that day with their followers, I understand they have influence and what they are doing to the PDP is to give the PDP a wrong perception. You know, that the PDP does not respect the South. But I want to say they are being dubious, they are being mischievous with, you know, such a, a, a narratives that they are pushing. They should be able to tell the people the truth. So the people are going to vote their conscience. And no state governor is sitting on votes the way they used to say that I'm sitting on votes. Nobody is sitting on any votes anywhere. Mm. The people are going to vote their conscience. The people are going to vote leaders that are going to represent them well. And the enlightenment right now is so much among the people. The, 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 the political enlightenment, the people are becoming more enlightened and they are not going to be weak by any false narrative. And Nigerians are not going to be pitched against themselves, to begin to fight themselves, to make it look that it is the southern people against the northern, northern Nigeria. No. The people are going to vote their conscience. The people are going to vote leaders that we bring them succor. What the people need, they need good roads, they need electricity. They need their children to go to the best public schools around. 
They need access to health facilities. That is what the people the, the, what the people are demanding for. It's not much. They're not asking for a house in Vienna. They're not asking for a house in uh, New York. Okay. That's not what Nigerians are asking for. Nigerians are asking for basic dividends of democracy, basic infrastructure, so that they can live the, uh, a good life. That if they are sick, they should go to the hospital. So I would like to say that the Electoral Act, it, as imperfect as it is, but at least it's a right step in the right direction, and we must give it to the APC government for signing that act into law. It gives the power back to the Electoral mm -hmm. Okay, um, Honorable, uh, thank you <laughs> very much. Um, at this point, we'll just wish the PDP good luck and also admonish. Thank that you, you very much. I think that is what we expect from you guys. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll give you advice for free that uh, if you watch the movie 300, the people there, the army there was, was not supposed to be defeated by anybody. It is only because of a cripple that they underrated, one cripple that they underrated, that made that army fall. So... We are hoping that you won't underrate anybody because of whether they are selfish or not selfish, so that you go into the 2023 election as a united front. So we Thank wish you, you good much. luck and may the best man win. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we've been talking with uh, Honorable uh, Angu Ongu, not Central Zonal Coordinator of a Tiku Support Organization, ASO. And uh, he has been telling us what is happening in the party, and he's confident that they are going to win. Well, like we said, may the best man win. Mm -hmm. We're taking a short break now to bring you the news, and after that, we'll conclude the program. Stay with us.